what would be some indication of oil logged condenser would oil pressure level slash deferential be low so a oil logged condenser we can take this from two different approaches let's start with a air cooled approach and then we'll go into a water cooled because that does a lot of the core basics of what I'm about to say stays the same, but it does change the format ever so slightly. The first thing to understand is majority of the time, our oil is going to log in the evaporator itself specifically. And there's a few reasons for that. One, the oil is getting like it's being carried through the discharge line. So it's going to get carried into the condenser via discharge, which is at the top of the heat exchanger. And then it's going to, it's going to be able to gravity drain its way down the heat exchanger into the liquid line and then be able to flow into the evaporator from there. Whereas with the evaporator, typically we're either injecting the refrigerant in from the bottom and we're pulling gas off the top, or even if we have a falling film, we're injecting it into a spray rail, which then the refrigerant falls to the bottom, including the oil, and we're still pulling gas off of the top. You've experienced how difficult quality chiller training is to get. I've spent over a decade working as a chiller tech on everything from air-cooled scrolls to large-scale centrifugals in manufacturing facilities. I'm tired of seeing how hard it is to get quality training and support. So I built the resource that I always wanted. I'm offering the help you're looking for, and we can get started today for free. ChillerAcademy.com So either way, the evaporator becomes a natural trap for our oil that the condenser naturally isn't. Because at least in the condenser, we have the ability to gravity drain our refrigerant out. Now this is true for flooded and falling film. If we have a DX evaporator or a braze plate, it's typically not so severe because we usually have a much higher velocity through the heat exchanger. So with falling film and flooded, we don't have a lot of focused velocity that can carry that oil up the heat exchanger through the with the vapor and out. But with a DX, which the refrigerant is inside the tubes at that point, or with a braze plate, we can maintain a lot more velocity and a lot higher focused velocity. So what that allows us to do is whatever oil makes it to the evaporator, it has the ability to actually get carried back in a way that it can't with the other style, which is why like with a DX or a brace plate evaporators, you don't see oil recovery systems with that. You don't see adductors, you don't see gas pumps. You don't see those things with that style of evaporator because we can as long as we can maintain velocity, we can re maintain oil return. But that is not true with the other styles. Hence, a recovery system is needed. So the evaporator is going to be the place that you primarily collect oil. Heavy oil leads to excessive or high, call it high, approach values. And you'll also, which in the nature of being a high approach value, you're going to have lower saturations on the evaporator specifically, right? So this is all collecting there. Now, how that relates to in the condenser, there are circumstances where I've had condensers begin to struggle with oil logging. Usually I've found that it's when there's a high oil charge, there's just too much oil in the system, or we're not maintaining a high enough head pressure to maintain velocity through the condenser side of it. This is true for air-cooled and water-cooled, but especially on the air-cooled side, most of all. What I've seen with air-cooled is because the, if the system is not perfectly level, then what I've seen happen is whatever side it's tilted towards, the oil will naturally collect on that side of it. And especially in, say, a low ambient condition or something of that nature, when our condenser coils are cold, our condenser saturation is very low if we don't maintain if we don't get that condenser saturation up and we have a lower saturation which is going to inevitably reduce how much velocity we have through that heat exchanger we're not going to be able to push those little pockets of oil that stack up in the condenser properly what that will eventually do is if that were to happen 
that will lead to a higher head pressures. Now, that is kind of a self-correcting effect, though, on an air-cooled machine, because if the reason we're struggling with velocity in the first place is because of cold condensers, then less heat exchange is going to heat up our condensers and it's going to push its way through. And eventually you may hit this tipping point. What it will do though is it'll be far less efficient. Okay. Now there are scenarios where if you have a really unloaded machine, so that compressors are heavily unloaded, that can lower the velocity through the system enough to cause a similar problem. But most of the time I find it's actually due to the saturation and the pressure and, the, and just the force of the flow going through there, which the pressures have a huge part to play in that. That would be the air-cooled side. And on the water-cooled side, again, if we have excessive oil charge in the system, then I see it gets mixed in with the discharge a lot heavier. The oil separators will struggle if it has any. This can happen with centrifugals as well, but be probably more of a screw water-cooled screw issue. Either way, the oil separators can't process enough of that oil out. A heavy oil latent discharge gas gets sent out into the condenser, and that can create a much heavier coating of oil on the condenser tubes as it's draining down. So that is a, that is a real scenario to where you may not be stacking oil in the condenser, but because you have so much oil making it into the condenser, it's causing a much heavier coating than would normally be created. So that heavy coating is going to elevate your head pressures. And the getting hotter is going to be, in that circumstance, going to be minimal in its ability to self-correct in the same way that I talked about with an air-cooled coil. A water-cooled coil may not self-correct in the same way by those elevated pressures. So the be best solution there is you'll just want to correct your oil charge in the system to begin with. I have not seen it affect directly the oil pressure or deferential. Like those aren't going to be low in terms of something like that. If anything, they might start running high. But it, what it will do is it's going to affect your heat exchange and your saturation temperatures on both your EVAP and your condenser. Because if you've got a heavy enough oil charge that you're coating the condenser that severely to cause head pressure to elevate because of oil specifically, not because of other factors then that also means that you're also heavily stacking oil in your evaporator and that's going to be causing your evaporator to also run very poorly. So in my experience, I will usually see the symptoms in the evaporator first and eventually, again, if it's bad enough, you will start to see those same symptoms on the, oil, on the condenser side. My experience is high oil charge. Just there's too much oil in the system and it's allowing that oil to get congregated and collected in, in mass in the wrong places in the system, more than the system was designed to overcome naturally on its own, which is gonna affect your heat exchange. That's gonna be the primary issue that I personally have ran into and what I would expect to see in the field.